My name is Shota Kay, a uh, professional beatboxer, vocal percussionist, uh, musician in residence here at the Department of Dance of Towson University. My name is Ian Hesford. I've been a multi-instrumentalist and musician for the past 20 some years professionally and um, I've always been into uh, traditional uh, sounds. My first gateway instrument, I call it, was the didgeridoo. And uh, ever since then, I've um, always had my eyes and ears out for any strange, rare, um, traditional, or invented instruments that I can find that interest me, that I'm called to. I tried to immerse myself and learn more about humanity um, around the, the world. And um, I've always believed that uh, you can learn more about a culture by listening to its music than any other thing, because music is like the language of the soul. Um, I've always been very curious and passionate about other extensive vocal techniques and traditions from around the world that exist outside of beatboxing. Part of that stems from the grand capacity that traditional beatboxing has. This one really interesting dynamic leg up on other vocal art forms, beatboxing from what I've seen in my travels, travels and in my research is the only vocal art form that can absorb any other vocal art form from around the world and make it adhere to the rules and the codifications of beatboxing. I didn't learn about throat singing until the year 2002. I had a beatbox collective that I started at Penn State University. One of the other beatboxers said, man, do you know about throat singing? And I said, no, what's that? He showed me some of it. I was like, whoa, that's really cool. Sounds like beatboxing without the drum portion of it. So I had been an avid fan and follower and a student of it ever since and then organically absorbing not just bits and pieces of the language and the throat singing techniques but kind of going deeper into the, the cultural and historical context of this music you know beyond the wow factor of the technique like oh my god they're doing this sound with their voices, how are they doing that, and, and really get into the essence of these amazing vocal traditions. Tuva is located within the Russian Federation, southern Siberia, and it's only been within the last few decades that the world has gotten to know Tuva and its music and so forth, and it's really the music that's been spearheading the, the presence of Tuva in the world. I would say that there are less than a million speakers of the Tuvan language. So to take this music all over the world, it's a way of shedding a light and raising a flag for Tuva um, just by stepping on stage and, and performing. Um, there's a, and then even beyond that, you could argue that there's a larger natural preservation that's being advocated here because a lot of the music stems from a nomadic tradition of emulating your environment. You know, like for example, Bobonadir, uh, as a throat singing technique, it looks to emulate a stream or a stream of running water. Sounds like this. <clears throat> So if you're using something from a nomadic tradition that's emulating a natural landscape, non-industrialized, there's not just a fight for a linguistic and cultural presence, but there's also a fight for that culture that's existing in a naturally synthesized state with your natural environment. Really beautiful stuff going on in, in Tuva musically. Uh, in relationship to its natural landscape. There's just so many dimensions to consider and absorb through this tradition. Um, so as a beatboxer, my way of paying tribute has been to take a few of these different styles um, and fuse it within the beatboxing techniques I've been cultivating since a child. I, I wouldn't know the first thing about how to improve someone else's throat singing, but I can. I feel like I have what it takes to inspire someone to be a more cultivated ambassador for this language.